The guy was understandably pumped until she clarified, saying, No, no, no. Show me your defense. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about the best 5v5 teams in this current meta. It's a pretty tough meta to, to try to plan around and so we're going to discuss all of those things here. Uh, and there's also an offensive teams video if you want to go look at that. It's in the linked, link is in the video description. It's also going to be linked at the end of this video if you want to watch uh, an account that's a little bit smaller in uh you know it's still facing some really tough opponents but it's only eight million i'm going to be doing a video about that hopefully tomorrow it's, uh so look for that that's for smaller accounts hopefully that will help it's longer form content but it is something that i do every month just as a labor of love and um speaking of love Thank you so much for, to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Seriously, I, I couldn't do this without you. You are truly appreciated, guys. And if you want to support this channel for free, folks, all you gotta do is hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe, comment. Let's mount the algorithm, folks. The algorithm is getting defensive. I don't actually know if that's true. I can't back that up, but I thought I'd bring the word defense into the conversation, and therefore, let's go to the game and save me from uh, more awkwardness. Not that that's possible. So, whoa, we're in the in the game madness. Uh, this is all right. So we've got four or five Galactic Legends here, guys. And the this season, the name of the game is trying to minimize the really easy counters your opponent might have to beat your Galactic Legends, forcing them into an alternative path of destroying you is going to be really beneficial if uh, they'll kill your team probably that there's, there's an overabundance of teams in the current meta to be able to handle what you have but if you can make them use a different team enough times they're gonna run out of the really premium good bail them out of things teams and get them to the point of oh i don't have enough teams now so uh there, there's a few different teams that we're going to talk about with that uh but the the key here folks and this is something I showed in the offensive teams video as well. The key to winning this season could potentially just be Baby Cal. And the reason for that is uh, he really wants to be... Uh, so speaking of really easy counters to your to our teams, uh, so Ray is a good defensive character. We've established that for a long time. She's always been very strong on defense. Uh, the, the AI plays her about as well as you can hope for, etc. However, recently there's been a new team that just spams wins against Ray, even with her really am uh, amazing Datacrons, and that is the Seer Malakos team uh, variant. And the thing is though, you're gonna have to make a decision because currently Ray is something that uh, just gets destroyed with Seer, Malakos, and Cal. The win percentages are very, very high. However, when you take Cal off of the team on offense, then the win percentage goes down by like somewhere between 10 to 20 percent. And, and, and similarly, if you put Cal on defense, the Seer Malakos teams really struggle against it and they their win rate is reduced as well. But you can't have both, you can't have him on both teams and so you have to make a decision. Do you want to bolster your team on defense against the most common uh, threat to that team that's off meta, that's kind of cheap, so to speak? Um, or, and I know that not everyone's going to consider it cheap, I know it's a lot of Omicrons folks, but uh, for, for especially the top level meta, that, that's kind of the truth. Like, Seer Malakos is, is, a, is a somewhat cheap team because it's not a Galactic Legend. Um, so you could force someone to use a better team if you put Seer Cal on there, or potentially they'll just fail straight up with Seer and Malakos. So uh, you just have to make a decision, and we have a few different decisions like that. So without more discussion on it, let's talk about uh, these different teams. So first off, we have data crons with, they're called thick crons, or at least that's what I'm calling them, where you get 15% more uh, health and protection for every uh, every character that's similarly aligned to you. So that means 15% per, uh, you know, for Jabba, Kersantan, Embo, and Boba Fett on this team. Uh, so you get 60% for the whole team, which is pretty nice. Uh, health and protection, uh, for a, especially for a, a 
team whose faction is not currently covered by Datacrons is a pretty nice boost, which is why you take this time. Landino gets to ride the pine, and you get to play... Boba gets his time to shine with Jabba. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Ride the pine, chance to shine. Not intended, but... <laughs> Awesome, anyways. So, you want four dark side characters with Jabba. Put them on defense. Hope that your opponent is dumb enough to just use their uh, Night Sisters and, you know, lose half the time. Or maybe they'll just get a really good bargain and kill you with Night Sisters, and then it, you're in trouble. Uh, Boba can do, uh, in theory, he's cool because he can kill Night Sisters permanently, which really subtracts from the <laughs> the equity or whatever that the value that Night Sisters have, but in practice, he very rarely gets to missile them off the board. Uh, that would be nice, though. I'm sure that that's happened to great satisfaction to a few people. Though, of course, no one got to see it, so maybe it's not that satisfying. If, if Boba destroys if he rockets a night sister on while he's on defense and no one's around to see it does it still is it still satisfying it's very similar to the tree making a sound in the forest when it falls down now we have ray all right so there's two there's a datacron folks that uh gives you it'll boost with with ray every time you do a debuff uh, on your opponent or every time a debuff goes away then it's going to boost her offense. And so the best version of this team, folks, is actually... Hold on a sec. I, I didn't change this. <laughs> Boom, there there he is. Okay, so uh, this is the best version of of the Ray team if you have the 2% Datacron, which not everyone has, I realize. But if you do that, then you're putting all these debuffs down. And Jedi or Baby Cal is doing his thing, trying to keep everyone alive. The Seer Malikos teams have a pretty, it's like a 40 some percent win rate against this particular comp. If you can spare all these teams, of course, then you don't have Bad Batch. Then you don't have Dash Rendar. And it, I mean, Dash is so important to his team if you can spare him, though. And then, and Cal is also very important. So these are all extremely important characters. They combine to make a very strong team on defense, at least against the Seer Malikos squad, which is. I see it is the biggest threat to Ray staying around, um, sticking around. So I think that this is a team that we're we're going to end up probably seeing a little bit of this season at least. Um, this is probably what I'm going to try running for a little. We'll, we'll just have to see. But this is a this is a very strong team. If you don't have the two percent Datacron, uh, just do the best you can, folks. This is just put a bunch of a mess of characters. For the most part, Seer Malikos is going to wipe it out, and if they try to use something else, it's going to be a mixed bag of potential threat. I mean, I just have a very, very jaded view, folks, of Ray getting holds because most people where I'm at tend to have a very have a high success rate. One thing that you'll notice, folks, is that we don't have the Holdo Cron here. We or the Holdo, Holdo on this team. Yes, she helps you on defense a little bit, but not much against Seer Malikos, which is probably your biggest threat. The, the instead, what I discovered, folks, when I was looking at when I was looking at the the stats, putting. If you just put one of the Poes on down here, he does okay on defense, but he gets that team gets destroyed by Starkiller, it gets destroyed by Malgus, it gets destroyed by all kinds of things, even without uh, like good Datacron. It just gets wrecked by a ton of teams. The second you put Holdo with the Holdo Cron on this team, you you just like it goes, Afra goes from 80% win rate to 0% win rate. There, there's a ton of different teams that, that like, Starkiller goes to, like, 20% win rate. It, it's a crazy, that this team is, is a very strong team on defense. Holdo does a lot more for your team if it's on this squad, on the Finzori team. And, uh, and then if you can spare Jedi or Baby Cal, you may as well because... She doesn't do much against Seer Malikos, and then Cal does kind of stop Seer Malikos, at least to some degree. And so, that, that's that's my current split, folks. I keep saying, let's just see. But I think for, for the very start, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. And, uh, you know, you can always watch me on Twitch if you want to see how my success is. And uh, you, you don't have to watch live. You can always watch, after the fact, my, my VODs stay up. The, the video recording of it stays up for like two months afterwards so you can go watch it in retrospect 
Now, here's another speculative thing, guys. Uh, it's experimental. I did get my Rolo up to Relic 8 recently. I've been wanting to do that for a while, actually, because she... I love, I love the idea, at least. So, so what, the, the one annoying thing about Leia, she's a great character, great galactic legend. One of the things that I just really hate about her, though, is the you can't mess around with turn order or with, with cooldown reduction and stuff. And so uh, I love the idea of using Rolo as the lead because uh, Leia still gives a lot of really cool stuff via uniques to her team. And uh, Rolo is nice because she can then reset her cooldowns and just spam her AoE over and over and over again. And so, uh, whereas this team isn't going to have a crazy high win rate, I do have uh, Chupio here as well, killing the CLS team, which I doubt I'm going to use that much this season anyways. Um, this team seems to have early... Uh, potential against like the stap squads that you know we want to stop the really easy you know automatic counters that are that are out there and I don't think that this is a I don't think it just stops that stap team cold but it does look like it, it has the potential to get some holds against it and at the very least if you have a Rolo with Relics, which most of us, if you've unlocked Leia, you have at least a Relic 5 Rolo, this team is probably something that's doable. <clears throat> you probably want to maximize her offense, give her some tenacity, do some cool stuff like that, but that's the plan currently, folks. Just going to use that team on defense. Um, uh, if you don't want to use Rolo, if you want to use Chupio on the team, uh, the best version of Leia against Stap right now and against a lot of different counters, honestly, guys, is Captain Rex, just because he does the AoE daze, which is just so nice for the team. And then Old Ben, that, like, Old Ben tends to be one of the top helpers for Leia. Uh, these two are probably the best. Uh, Stapp still has a really high win rate against this team, but this team, the Rex does seem to slow Stapp down by about 10%, something like that. So instead of being, like, 90 eight percent it's like a 88 percent something like that it might be worthwhile to do of course then you can't have him on phoenix but he is he is uh, very strong here now we do have uh, kenobi if you want to put him on defense i don't think i'm going to be doing that this this time guys um but he if, if you want to put him on defense this is what i think the best version is going to look like i thought i'd just show you so that you know what it looks like and if i can find a counter that is not just the mirror i'll probably end up going for that instead and putting this team on defense just to mess with my opponents but for now there are there are a few enough things that beat this team that you know i i don't think i want to multi-shot it i'd just rather just beat it and drop three or four banners if i could consistently uh let's see it's supreme leader kylo now this is this is a big question mark as well what's the best version uh like what's the best yeah, version of this team. I'm sure Crew makes it a stronger team, but we're, we're using Crew with Seer and Malakos this season, I think. Uh, but we can have a really good First Order Stormtrooper Kron, we can have a really good First Order TIE Pilot Kron, and Supreme Leader Kylo is also has a really good Data Kron as well. So which one is going to be the best? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. It's hard to ignore that datacron that that's his with in fives because it just boosts his offense by a huge amount depending on how many relic levels are on his team and now in fives <clears throat> threes it was really good in fives it, you get even more you get even more offense right off the bat uh, on the other hand being able to boost your uh, you know just be able to boost your offense is probably enough on defense this team is probably going to be fairly consistently on defense and going to be obnoxious. And I don't think Bane is going to do that much against him, frankly. Uh, or at least not super consistently. So another team on defense that's going to get holds for you. Of course, this is going to kill a lot of teams. It's just it's not going to kill Kenobi, though. I don't, I don't think it'll kill Kenobi, at least. Uh, uh, unless you get pretty lucky. So, uh, you know, I guess if you can stun lock Cat, that, that's great. I, I don't know how consistent that's going to be. You're going to be able to do that, though, consistently. Um, I, I think putting General Skywalker down with a Galactic Republic team, or a Kron, that reduces damage it, on level 6 is, and then makes boosts their health and protection is going to be a fairly compelling, strong team on defense. Uh, we'll, 
I think this is going to be on defense a lot. And people are going to just use Sith the Eternal Emperor to beat it. So if you can find a way to force Sith the Eternal Emperor somewhere else, make them use something else, this team is going to end up being fairly frustrating to beat, which is why I don't think people are going to be using CLS a whole lot this season, because I don't think CLS can mess with General Skywalker that much, at least not this season. Um, gun guns, if you have them, I think place them. Uh, right now, it's up in the air. I think people people are saying that if you use the Jar Jar Kron right now, which is in theory the best one, that uh, there are some counters that are going to work and some counters that don't. And then if you use the Boss Nass one, there are other counters that are going to work and others that don't, which really tells you nothing. But the, everyone, all the Territory War people are being very um, closed mouthed about it. So putting it on defense with either the Boss Nass or Jar Jar Kron is going to do you well. I would start with a Jar Jar Kron and uh, just, you know, hold your breath, I guess. Um, can you believe that I put Relic 8 on Rolo before I put one on Boombadir? <laughs> I'm not surprised either. Now, but of course, not too many people are going to have the the so-called gentleman suitors for Coin Nami Dolly yet at, at Relics. And my best guess for, for the Galactic Republic Jedi is just going to be, well, Galactic Republic Jedi. I think she, she's going to be best suited to helping them. Which ones are up in the air? I just put the ones that I'm most likely to have available to help uh, with, with things. I think it's going to be a fairly obnoxious and strong team. Though, obviously, Master Qui-Gon and the, uh, you know, Kenobi... Should we start calling him that? He's, he's very, he's a new, but maybe that's dumb. But um, I, I think this is what I'm going to be placing with, with Qui-Gon and his Padawan. Uh, and otherwise, like Yoda seems to have a lot of good potential and Shock T both have some cool synergies and interactions with Queen Amidala. Whether or not that's going to be the best version, we'll just have to find out. The Omicrons aren't something that are in play in any other game mode until you get to GAC, obviously. So we'll have to find out. Uh, looking at the looking at the stats, folks, putting Kellerin back uh, as lead can do some cool stuff on defense, but he, it does even cooler stuff on a Qui-Gon team. It, it gets holds against a lot of teams. Uh, that it typically doesn't. Now, Malgus is it's not going to stop Malgus or anything, but one way or another this this team this team will be pretty good on defense and if they want to use a galactic legend to kill it, yes, it's very killable by a galactic legend, then you forced them to use a GL, which is nice. Uh, Saw, this is kind of a throwaway team, folks. Like putting Biggs and Chur like you could put, you could make this team a lot better by adding Rex, by adding Drogon if you can spare him from that Leia team, uh, and with his Omicron, like he could be a pretty good defensive team. Right now, he's not a super huge threat, and I think this Sidious Kron is at least a fairly high, a fairly big threat to this team, anyways. I, I would use it with caution on defense, but if you if you can. Uh, if you can spare him, then I guess do it. Commander Luke, if... <laughs> honestly, I don't think he's going to be of much use on offense this season. So, throwing him on defense, there are worse things. Put a thick crown on him so that nothing is really easy. And it's probably going to drop, uh, like, steal a lot of... Uh, a lot of banners, at the very least. Uh, Trench, I don't think we need him for offense, and on defense, he can really be a tough bastard to beat. In fives, if you have them modded the right way, if you have them... Uh, if you put Omicrons on him, no, that's that's uh, for that's for a different game mode. But this team is very strong, folks. People keep saying that tr Trench is bad, and it, it's getting a lot of holds. Now, if it's on defense and someone has Star Killer available, which a lot of them will, Star Killer does kill it at a fairly decent rate. So be mindful of that. Be cautious uh, and get get ready to be sad. And then if they don't have gun guns, guys, throw Treya on defense. Uh, she, she's good. She's not transcendent on offense. I mean, she, maybe she kind of almost is, but she, she does fine on defense as well. It's another good option. And then obviously there are filler squads that you can choose to add that I'm not going to show you. Like Tuskins, like... Ewoks or Jawas or whatever nonsense, but that's it for today folks uh, What teams do you think I'm missing here? What teams do you think will be exploited? I would be very interested to hear what your thoughts are folks Thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things Zareth prevails <laughs>